So I've really been enjoying my belt squats lately. Couple reasons, one, obviously, in keeping with the theme of the last uh, few months I've been talking about, great way to get heavy weight into the lower body without axial compression. Um, and the other thing is I really love the ability to shift to body position in the legs relative to positions that are more difficult to do with a traditional squat or a deadlift. Um, so depending on where you put your feet, you're, you're gonna be able to get it more quad dominant, more glute dominant, more hand dominant, et cetera. Um, the very that I like doing the most I'll do, I'll do here is kind of a head field position. So when I'm standing, I'm actually leaning forward and you'll see I'll, I'll kind of just rest my hands on the squat rack although I'm not pulling all of the load is, is still generated below. Um, the other thing I really enjoy doing is kind of pause sets at the bottom. So just adds a little bit of tension without again having to add much more weight because as you can see I'm kind of at the limit of how much weight I put on here until I go and get more thinner plates. So this scoreboard position um, to me feels better than doing it standing only you can do both. And then we'll pause without obviously resting. So if you have a squat rack already, it, it's a it's a no-brainer, right? These things are they're cheap, um, and it's just a little adapter that sticks down to the edge of the rack. If you don't have a rack for buying a separate belt squat machine, you know maybe the ROI is on there. They're they're obviously bigger footprint, talks more money. Again, I, this just feels so good on my lower back. Um, it just really produces absolutely no stress, no um, overextension, uh, which, which again is, a, is not a one common pack. Okay, I've been asked to comment on this by a variety of people, one of them being one of my senior instructors at the Czech Institute because she's a highly trained physiotherapist and much more. So there's a few comments I want to share about what I think it's Peter is sharing here. One, these types of exercises are what I classify as secondary exercises. They're secondary exercises because they should never take the place of primary exercises, which are functional exercises. Put simply, I developed the primal pattern system in 1988 to show how the body has to move naturally to survive in nature. And there's seven key primal patterns that we must do standing on our own feet, balancing ourselves during the movement. So no support. He's using support here, which I'll get into in a second. Those patterns are squatting, lunging, bending, pushing, pulling, and twisting and gait, which includes walking, jogging, which is a different pattern because of the speed and the nature of the movement, and then all out sprinting, which is the third derivation of the gait pattern. So if we don't do those patterns enough to get us strong enough to meet the demands of our environment, well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get hurt doing a pattern. For example, the most common one is people bending over and picking up things like suitcases, boxes, nurses. I've rehabbed tons of them from transferring people from one gurney to another, but they're too weak to do it and too dysfunctional in the core. So the key thing you've got to remember is that during any functional movement, i.e. balancing your own body while doing the movement, such as a primal pattern movement, your core has to stabilize all your muscles and your whole postural system in order for you to coordinate those movements in a way that doesn't get you injured. You have to have pelvic girdle stability, knee stability, etc core stability. So there's an old saying, you can't fire a cannon from a canoe, which is an analogy to say that if your prime mover muscles are too strong, the cannon for your support system, your stabilizers, you're going to end up getting injured. And I've rehabbed too many of these injuries to count. So what you see here is that 
I believe it's Peter, is holding on to the squat rack, which automatically will shut your core off. So he's developing a motor program that's specific to that exercise, but does not include normal core recruitment, nor does it activate the balance centers in the brain, nor is there any need for coordination, etc. So there's another aspect of this, which is called biomotor abilities. This is very low on the biomotor ability assessment scale. In other words, it's not a very neurologically rich exercise. So all the strength you're gonna develop doing an exercise like that might make your muscles look good. Good, but it will not improve performance doing functional activities. I've tested this over and over and over and over again. Two, as I said, the stronger you get doing that, because your core is not being activated, the greater the deficit you create between core strength and stability and prime mover stability. <clears throat> so eventually you become like a Volkswagen with 500 horsepower and not enough suspension or brakes to handle the power. So it'll go like hell in a straight line, but it won't turn. The other thing is he's saying how good it feels on his back, but I can tell just by looking at him as a guy who's rehabbed a lot of backs, I'd be willing to bet you <laughs> a plenty of money that if you were to assess his spine, his L4-5 and L5-S1 are stuck in flexion. And most of us have that problem from sitting in chairs so much. So when he's putting that belt on his back, which he has up surprisingly high, the belt's touching all the way up at the thoracolumbar junction. All that weight is causing a shear force on his lumbar spine. If you look at what's called cinema radiography, which I've studied many, many times due to all the different types of training I've done in orthopedic rehabilitation, you can actually see, for example, when someone's doing an isometric biceps curl, just pressing against resistance, the whole humeral head will slide in the socket. So what I'm pointing out here is that there will be tremendous shear forces with that much weight pulling that spine down and forward. And the reason it probably feels good to him is because it's giving him a posterior to anterior mobilization, which would feel good to somebody that has that kind of problem. But that is not not a good idea to hang a lot of weight off your back like that, especially when you're not activating your core properly and he's not making any awareness of him. I can see his belly's just sticking right out. It's, he, he's definitely not using his core. So in a nutshell, these movements do not contribute to functional strength training. Two, they create a deficit between the prime mover system and the stabilizer system, which includes postural muscles. And the bigger that deficit, the more likely you are to end up with joint instability, inflammation, and all kinds of niggling injuries that can become big injuries. If someone's got an unstable spine, putting a belt on their back like that could cause tremendous problem and a lot of people have unstable lumbar segments, whether it be L4-5, L1-2, could be any number of them. It's not primary, it's creating imbalances in the system and ideally if you're going to use exercises like that, it should be coupled with one, assessing your core, two, assessing your flexibility so that you can determine whether or not your body's out of balance. Three, you need to make sure that you have enough functional movement in your programs so that your brain is learning how to integrate your core stabilizers and your prime movers in patterns that are functional. He also mentioned Fred Hatfield, who was big on what's called the said principle, specific adaptation to impose demands. What that means is that your body is so specific in its adaptation that you can only use the strength that you've created with an exercise in an environment that's pretty much identical to it. For example, you can do Smith squats all day long and very little improvement in vertical jump, but you can use the squat, free bar squat, and get significant improvements in vertical jump. Why? Because it's the same issue. With a Smith machine, you're not balancing yourself you're shutting your stabilizers off and you're basically doing an exercise that's completely artificial compared to having to jump and balance yourself and accelerate without support. So those are just a few of the considerations that I would look at. Also, there's one last thing. When you're not stabilizing yourself, you get asymmetrical recruitment of muscles. So as he said, depending on where you put your feet, you can make your quads work more, your glutes work more, which is kind of a classic bodybuilding mentality. But you've got to be very careful. For example, if you have anterior cruciate ligament laxity and you put your feet in a position that works the quads more than it works the hamstrings, for example, you'll have anterior shear because as the quads contract, it'll pull the tibia forward and that can put tremendous load on the anterior cruciate ligament, which is one of the reasons I've been saying forever, you should never do knee extension exercises if you have anterior cruciate laxity turn on at all. They don't need to. But when you're squatting, as you bend forward, the hamstrings have to counterbalance the forward gravity movement of your center of gravity of your trunk and that 
causes a co-recruitment of the hamstrings against the quads, which stabilizes the knee beautifully. In fact, even with heavy loads, you get almost no shear force in the knee, and it's been studied if you're doing a functional movement. But when you're doing asymmetrical loads without core like this, you can get asymmetrical loading around joints, which leads to tension on the ligamentous system, which can lead to laxity, which can lead to unstable joints, which leads to chronic inflammation and then joint degeneration, cartilage breaks down, and having rehabbed countless of these types of injuries, I can tell you that these types of exercises are usually the first thing I got to completely get rid of until a person is fully rehabilitated and has enough knowledge of program design to know when and how to use these exercises. So, you know, stuff like this, you got to be careful with. If you don't have enough knowledge of what you're doing, it can look cool. A lot of people make stuff up. I'm not saying he's just making this up, but a lot of people make shit up like this just to put stuff on video and pull something out of their ass, so to speak. But without a knowledge of anatomy, physiology, and biomechanics, you can actually be doing more damage than good. Especially when you look at that much weight hanging off your lumbar spine, shearing that thing forward with no core control. I'm glad it feels good to him, but he's obviously not someone that's rehabilitated many spines or he wouldn't be encouraging that. So those are my comments. Again, I don't have any criticism of the individual, not even the exercise. I'm just saying you have to be very careful when you're using exercises like that because what looks like a cool thing can end up costing you a lot of money. So thanks for joining me.